At JP Morgan, IPO models were some of the most exciting projects we worked on, and Alibaba's IPO was the largest in the history. In this video, I'll walk you step by step through Alibaba's financial model which I created and show you how to analyze one of the most iconic deals of all times. Let's dive in. Hello everyone, welcome to Wall Street Mojo. Today we are diving into the super exciting topic, Alibaba's IPO and the financial model behind its valuations. As you know, Alibaba's IPO was one of the biggest in the history, right? And the numbers behind it are just as fascinating. In this video, what I'll do is I'll give you a walkthrough of the financial model that we created when Alibaba came up with its IPO. And this was long time back. So you can see that these numbers of historicals are until 2014, right? And then the forecasts are something like this, right? From 2015 onwards to 2022. So the idea here is that uh, I'll give you a brief uh, overview of how we went about creating this financial model with the idea that, uh, you know, you will be able to figure out how it is uh, created in the real life case, right? And uh, also, we'll also highlight, you know, how we went about finding out the final valuation of Alibaba, okay? So that's the overall objective of this um, tutorial and uh, first thing first if you want to get access to this financial model which we created it is super easy you can actually go to this website here wallstreetmojo.com and uh, i will share this url where you can get a direct download of this uh, alibaba's financial model i'll share that in the description link below okay so first download this uh, financial model so that it's super easy for you to you know walk through like the way i am discussing right so let's get started here so let's look at the typical structure of the financial model. So you can see that this financial model is divided broadly into three different parts. First, we have the core financial statements, right? Then we have the supporting financial modeling schedules. And the third one includes the valuations. So in a typical model, you know, this is a standard practice to have, uh, you know, two to three different parts like this one. The core financial statements are the income statement, balance sheets, and the cash flows, right? And then we have the supporting schedules on the basis of which we do forecast of uh, important items like debt, working capital, depreciation, etc. And then finally, we have the DCF valuation and option value as well. So let's go to each one of them. So here we have the quarterly income statement where uh, the income statement of uh, quarterly numbers from Alibaba's uh, registration statements have uh, been downloaded and um, put here, right? Then we have the income statement here, right? So let's start discussing by looking at the income statement. So first thing first, what we see here is that um, its financial model is divided into two parts. Alibaba's historical statement and then we have the forecast as well, right? So the typical approach is that you go about populating the historicals of the company like the way we did here. And then on that basis, you analyze how it has been doing historically and then figure out the forecast of the company. So for example, when it came to Alibaba's IPO, we observed that Alibaba's revenue is divided into four different segments, right? China commerce, international commerce, cloud computing and internet infrastructure and others. So what we did was we figured out how it has been performing historically and you can do various things to analyze that, right? So for example, what we did was we figured out how has been the annual growth rates here in each of these segments. Again, we would have more information within each segment if you go through that SEC filings and um, here we saw that each segment is further subdivided into retail and wholesale. So that's what we did. And on the basis of the growth rates of the historicals, we put some number for the future, right? And that's what we did and predicted the reg segmental revenue for each of these, right? And on that basis, we came up with the revenue numbers. Likewise, when it comes to expenses, usually it is a uh, a percentage of sales, a percentage of, uh, or we take gross margins as a benchmark to figure out how the cost will move. So that's what we did here and completed the forecast, the income statement. Likewise, when it came to uh, the balance sheet, you will do the same exercise. You'll populate the historicals and then you try and figure out how the forecast the company will look like. But uh, this financial modeling, again, is not a very linear exercise that you complete the income statement and then go to the balance sheet and complete that and then go to the cash flows and then figure out how the cash flows would look like. It's actually a non-linear approach where 
you complete parts of the income statements and then you go to let's say uh, depreciation in capex figure out how much is the depreciation of the company and then uh, you know you also figure out how much is the capital expenditure year over year so via this depreciation in capex uh, schedule we'll get one item for the income statement and the other item that is capex for the balance sheet right and this capital expenditure will also go into the cash flows so while we complete each and every schedule one by one we realize that okay it is thoroughly integrated right and that's what the idea of a complete financial model is all about so here we can see that uh, you know there are these supporting schedules so these schedules are kind of needed to figure out how the income statement balance sheets and cash flows will look like in the future in totality so the approach is simple first you complete this uh, whole forecast of the company like alibaba like the way we have done here and then once you are done with this you go about doing the valuation so let me just now directly take you to the valuation now uh, uh, sheet here that is this dcf valuation and uh, what we do in dcf valuation is that you know we basically uh, follow a free cash flow to the firm approach we figure out that how much will the company have in terms of cash flows availability in the future and then we discount it using the cost of capital so that's what we did here we have uh, taken a simple formula for free cash flows to the firm that is ebit into 1 minus t and then we added the non cash expenses because depreciation and amortization are the non cash expenses right and then capital expenditure is actually the investment in the company right so that also has to be reduced from your free cash flows because that's needed in the future too right and then finally any changes in the working capital we also take care of this so this is a typical formula for free cash flow to the firm and that's what we did we calculated and linked all the necessary numbers from the respective schedules to find out the free cash flow to the firm for each of these years okay so once we did that what was also needed was to figure out how much is your discount rate right because uh, on the basis of the cash flows that we have now forecasted we need a discount rate right so that we can find the present value of these cash flows the present value of these cash flows will give us the total value of alibaba and that's what we did we came up to this price of uh, discount rate that was 9% and then there are certain set of assumptions also that are to be used like uh, how it will this company will do after let's say 2022 right so we have to kind of assume certain things like uh, what will be the infinite growth rate we cannot forecast for next 50 years or 100 years or so right so our projection uh, horizon could be 5 years 7 years right but beyond that we'll have to take some assumptions so typically that assumption could be 1% 2% depending on the industry we've taken it this as 3% so finally what you do is that you figure out these are the free cash flows right going forward you find the net present value of this so that you know the value of uh, the explicit cash flows until 2022 and then beyond that 22 how much will be the overall value so that's what we do and then finally we add this up to figure out the total value of the company and we call that as enterprise value right so with the help of enterprise value we can come to the equity value as well and all of these formulas we had discussed earlier in our earlier tutorials as well but uh, a typical way to look at it is that the enterprise value or ev is equal to equity value plus debt minus cash okay so our objective here is that enterprise value we are able to figure out using this present value approach from free cash flows to the firm okay so this is what we have got okay what we need here is the equity value because we are trying to figure out what will be the fair value of the stock to the shareholders right so this is what we need to find so what we can do is we can adjust the formulas by taking this debt and cash on the left hand side right so the formula can be rewritten as enterprise value minus debt plus cash so this will be equal to your equity value okay so that's what we did here equity value here is enterprise value which we found for total we have added cash and reduced debt to find the equity value then there are certain set of other adjustments also that are needed 
and uh, once you do that you can finally calculate the overall share price and the share price is nothing but your equity value divided by the total number of outstanding shares so total number of outstanding shares are calculated in a separate schedule here we have this share outstanding schedule so that's what we did okay and with that we were able to figure out the actual fair price of Alibaba so this is a very exhaustive model that we created and uh, you know I would encourage you to actually have a look at it and I'm sure that uh, you know some of the things may not be able to uh, you may not be able to follow it completely but what I want you to actually do also is that go to this resource here you know we have uh, Alibaba's financial model IPO download template right but I would like you to look at this one create a financial model and go in this link financial modeling in excel okay so once this uh, article opens up what you need to now do is that uh, here we have explained you how to go about creating the financial model from scratch for colgate so here we start by downloading colgate's financial model and step by step we have taught you how to go about creating the model like by starting the downloading and you know populating the historicals to going about doing the ratio analysis and then finally coming to this uh, projections right so we do that one by one so how to go about projecting the income statement balance sheets and cash flows so all of that is kind of done here so if you scroll down you'll see that each of these things are explained step by step so while you would like to have a look at alibaba's financial model and uh, if you are unable to figure out how it was created i would strongly encourage you to have a look at this i will uh, put this link in the description box below so that you can uh, go about you know creating this step by step financial model as well so if you want to learn financial modeling professionally you can consider taking these courses on financial modeling from wall street mojo so there are two ways in which we provide financial modeling uh, help one is through the self study course the self study course basically are all about you know learning financial modeling on your own and what we have done in this uh, financial modeling course self study format is that we created mcdonald's financial model right and then uh, we did that step by step by downloading the annual report to you know populating the financials in the excel sheet and from there on to creating and forecasting each and every line item like the way we saw in alibaba's financial model typically we have gone much in depth in mcdonald's financial model and we created the tutorial on how to go about it this is exactly the same tutorial which uh, you know uh, can be used in different investment banks as well so that's one place where we have looked at uh, you know training on financial modeling the second is the live classes so every month we organize a uh, different live classes on financial modeling and in this financial modeling you can actually come and attend and uh, these trainings are basically taken by me and uh, the way we do it is uh, we take a case study and uh, start from scratch build the financial model and uh, complete it end to end over a two day period so that's the idea of live classes and uh, there's another format which is called as the immersive program where you not only just attend the live classes but you also are expected to create a financial model say for example uh, netflix and uh, you create the model you send it to us we as experts evaluate your model provide you with feedback on how it was done and uh, basically once you complete it successfully that's where you are eligible for this immersive program certification so this is a kind of a elaborative program where uh, we work with you as a coach and teach you financial modeling from scratch with this we come to the end of the tutorial if you found this video helpful please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this we'll be definitely diving more into financial modeling techniques case studies and real world examples in our upcoming videos stay tuned and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one